Uh, so, uh, as it was announced, uh, my name is Yuri. I'm a senior, senior Android developer. And today I'm going to present you the retrospective of my Android course at Astro Academy. Uh, I hope it would be useful and helpful for my colleagues who are involved in the mentoring process and obviously the ones uh, who wants to create their own course. Uh, they can find uh, some useful here as well. And the rest of the audience perhaps will pick up some interesting facts uh, that will write up their walk in Tuesday. So without further ado, uh, let's move to the intro section. Uh, at the start of February 2023, our Sotsur Academy asked me about my willing to write and to present and, uh, an Android course to the students of the Astrolog Academy. And uh, as you might guess, uh, I agreed to do that. Uh, let's move to the course requirements. Uh, there should be 26 to 30 pairs uh, total. Uh, I mean, the lectures and practices and uh, with the schedule of two pairs a week, uh, which is about three hours. Uh, students are on their fourth year having programming knowledge in C Sharp, but not in uh, Java or Kotlin. Uh, Ukrainian language was mandatory for this course, obviously. And I had to present the initial course structure beforehand. So uh, how can you create the course structure? The only answer I had was uh, it should be a plan that I would advise myself from the past to learn Android. And uh, I placed myself into the shoes of for the fourth year student. Uh, by the way, this is the exact time I tried to create an Android application myself back in 2013. And Android was completely new to them. So uh, instead of headfirst into the technical details, I wanted to explain uh, what is this framework? Uh, what instruments it is using? Tell them a bit about the history and changes in this platform. Uh, so moving from Java to Kotlin was a part of the story as well. Uh, I thought this should work. This should bring their attention to the subject uh, if I'll start it slowly, just step by step. And uh, I think uh, I was partially right. So obviously to create the course structure, I should show them how to run an Android Studio and the emulator, go with the Kotlin syntax and then I will just show them how to create an Android application, a piece of cake. Uh, yeah, I wish so. So, uh, but still to create the valid code structure, core structure, I had to realize what is this? The three hours of lectures. Uh, long enough to tell whenever you want, right? Well, it turned out not quite. And uh, how much is that in the album pages with the Calibri 12 pixels? I didn't know the answers for these questions. So for my first lecture that was called Code Development Tools for the Android Platform and Kotlin Language, I decided to add this small off topic discussing commercial development cycle, you know, just in case. And uh, it actually saved my first lecture. Uh, I wrote almost eight pages of text beside the commercial development part. Uh, but I was so nervous that I read them too fast. So there was almost no material left for the start of the second lecture. So I opened my uh, commercial development cycle sketches, started describing sprints, workload, story points, regression, plannings, and so on. And I think it, it was the peak of the students' activity over the lectures. Uh, some of them, uh, yeah, I think it would be on the next slide. <laughs> Some of them uh, were already involved in the small teams or projects and the other part didn't have a production experience at all. So I received so much questions like, what if that and what if that and what should I do in this case and so on. And it was a pleasure to share my experience with them. Uh, that is why it felt like the rest of the lecture passed in the minutes. 
And just because of that, the three hours limitation for all the lectures or, and practices, the initial course structure that I presented uh, before course started was modified, mo was modified after almost every lecture. Some items were added and some of them were moved to the scope of the next lecture and some of them uh, had to be removed completely. But I have to say that uh, the final version uh, looks much, much better to me. Uh, second, please. Okay, so what is the final course structure, you might ask? And uh, we have to cover one more slide and we're good to go. Uh, I ended up with uh, 11 lectures and uh, three practices, three hours each. Simple math will give you 42 hours of presenting the course only. Uh, the list of related documentation was added to the end of each lecture. And I also sent the lectures uh, content as is to students so it would help them with practices and uh, the homework. Okay, moving on to the final course structure. Uh, lecture number one, introductory code development tools uh, for the Android platform, Kotlin language and uh, commercial development cycle. As I mentioned previously, here I also talked about the fact that the legacy Java-based Android projects and libraries can be found to the modern days. So they would have to understand this code as well and uh, do not be afraid of it in the first place. Uh, lecture number two, uh, principles of object-oriented programming and SOLID, their usage in Kotlin. Uh, this theme is applicable for all the object-oriented programming languages in some degree, so uh, it should be useful for them in any case. Lecture number three, collections and programming, their implementation in Java Kotlin. Uh, I told students that uh, these are the questions that interviewers have a major chance to ask you about. Uh, also shared some stories about my technical interviews experience and uh, showed the difference in uh, Java and Kotlin collection handling approach. And they were actually impressed of how it can even work together because of the uh, amount of differences they have. Uh, moving on to the practice number one work with collections, creating, changing, and modifying lists. But uh, actually in scope of this uh, practice, we also covered sets and uh, maps. Uh, and lecture number four, main components, uh, containers of the Android application, uh, classes like application, activity, and fragment. <clears throat> it's all about four main components and uh, move to the second part where I presented the simplified model of uh, an Android application, which is one application container, uh, which holds the one or more activities uh, and each of them may contain one or more fragments. Uh, moving to the second part of this uh, course structure, lecture number five, uh, Android view, resources in Android view binding and the comparison of XML and compose approaches to represent view objects. Uh, I show the students the example with the compose view, but for the simplicity purposes, we uh, stick to the XML approach. Lecture number six, intense in Android, navigation and communication between activities. Uh, pretty obvious that uh, what I was talking about there. Uh, lecture number seven, uh, presentation or UI layer, MVP, MVVM, and MVI architectures, uh, usage of the view model, <coughs> communication between fragments. Uh, it was definitely the hardest uh, one for the students and uh, because they were familiar only with MVC in the C-sharp uh, development, and I think uh, I lost uh, lots of students uh, at this lecture. Maybe I, I made it too boring. I'm not sure though, but uh, yeah, it, it was the pretty hard one. Uh, moving to the practice number two, uh, creation of activity and fragment using resources in Android, uh, pretty self-explanatory as well. 
Lecture number eight, multi-threading, uh, Java, Java thread and uh, execution uh, service, Eric Java and Kotlin coroutines. Uh, start from the basics uh, and show a bit a uh, pipe approach that Eric Java used. I know that it is uh, a bit outdated, but uh, pretty much the same logic is used uh, in the Kotlin flows uh, now as well. So. And obviously, I presented the Kotlin coroutines, uh, much beloved by the engineering community. So the election number nine was uh, sending HTTP requests. I covered uh, libraries like OKHTTP OK and Retrofit, uh, repository for network requests. Uh, it is integration with Vue model and the GraphQL client for Android. Uh, so I described the differences between REST and the GraphQL API, and most of the students didn't even heard about the second one that GraphQL API exists. Uh, Lecture number 10, data storage, uh, shared preferences, data store and room database. Uh, repository to access local database, its integration with view model. Almost the same logic uh, that was used for the network part, but uh, now applied to the local storage. Action number 11, implementation of recycling view, adapter and view holder patterns, usage of glide to load images, the final lecture. And at this point, the students uh, should have all the required knowledges to create and build a simple Android application. So to wrap, uh, this whole things up. I created the uh, last practice, uh, practice number three, final project based on the MVVM architecture. And uh, we did a case study with this project. Uh, this practice wrapping all things together in form of Android application that makes actual network calls and to visualize a JSON. Uh, in form of the recycler view. And finally, uh, we had the final test. Uh, it was a quick one with several questions for each of the students. So uh, let's move to the homework section because why not? Uh, there was also five homework tasks during this course. After each one, we spent some time on the next lecture uh, discussing the results questions uh, the marker and uh, issues they face during its implementation. Uh, and you can easily align uh, those items with the lecture practices list. And uh, you probably already know which the first one is, is to install an Android Studio and run a test project on the emulator. And of course, we ran into a couple of surprises during this process, like ones related to the virtualization options. So I had to create uh, those kind of photos of the BIOS settings uh, that will allow you to enable the secure virtual machine options and uh, pretty much the same for uh, in case of the usage of Intel processors. So this uh, screenshot is viable for the AMD processors. Uh, yeah, next ones uh, were pretty ordinary, but still required before writing any useful code. It would be the uh, reading of additional documentation about main Kotlin syndexes uh, that we didn't cover on lectures and uh, read additional documentation about Kotlin collections in addition to the lecture materials. <clears throat> uh, and now moving to the actual homework practices. So. On the practice, we covered some collections and working with lists, sets, and maps. So uh, as the homework, uh, I asked uh, to uh, do some real easy tasks, like uh, you were provided with the user's list and you have to filter them, uh, create the copies, some modifications, and uh, the fourth one, uh, was used to practice with sets or maybe maps. There were different ways of uh, resolving these issues. And the final ones, 
uh, it was the to create the same layout uh, using the uh, practice uh, the practice code from the GitHub repo. You can download it uh, from the VCL's uh, control system, yeah, and uh, examine uh, classes, resources, and uh, try to create the same layout using the resources that uh, this project can, has. So you can see this is the uh, pretty complex layout. It has some backgrounds, uh, title, subtitle, footer, and uh, the main content is split by uh, the divider. You have two images and one of them with the tint mode enabled. So uh, this exercise shows that even though we have a limited amount of resources provided by the new project in Android Studio, we can still use them uh, in learning purposes to create a pretty complex constraint layout. And of course, one of the requirements was that the layout hierarchy should be as flat as possible because it is essential for Android. Uh, okay, moving on to the uh, struggles I faced uh, during the work on uh, this whole course. First one is the workload. Uh, each three hours lecture took about three hours to write it. Uh, first one took a bit more and the latest ones uh, took less, maybe because of the experience I've got. The practice took uh, even longer to prepare. So for me, splitting this time into pieces didn't work well because I was losing the point of the lecture. So the penalty in this case was the time to get back to this context. So ideally, you have to spend this preparation time at one go with a fresh head. So uh, I could allow myself to do that only at the weekends. And also uh, spending three hours every Monday to read these lectures for students uh, was pretty time consuming. And uh, it made my working day much longer because no one freed me from my regular duties on the project and work. The second one is the spread. After I finished teaching the first lecture, the first thought that came to my mind was, oh, there are 14 more. And uh, at the start of this run, I didn't realize how time consuming it would be, but uh, the more lectures I completed, the easier it felt. It is the marathon, not a sprint. Okay, I got it. Uh, the third one is the voice. Uh, after the first lecture read, uh, I didn't want to speak at all to the end of the day. It gets better lecture after lecture though, but I didn't expect it would be a challenge and problem at the first place. And uh, yeah, during this presentation, I'm facing this issue as well. Uh, the payment. Uh, to be fair, I knew all the below before accepting the proposal to create the course, but yeah, I received some from Astrog Academy, but it all obviously not included uh, the time I spent to write these lectures, uh, which is roughly a half of time of all time spent. And of course, the rates are the same as for other lectures in uh, in the academy, not uh, your payment rates in the SoftServe. And the SoftServe Academy is just a mediator between you and the Astrog Academy. But I still received nice merch from there, and uh, I will show it in the benefit section. Uh, no, no, no. That, that's too far, sorry. I don't see the... Okay, maybe I, maybe I missed one. So one of uh, the issues was also the attendance. Uh, this course was the facultative, but, uh, and that is why I didn't expect 100% of the people to join the lectures uh, in the first place. But I had to say though, that uh, the attendance percentage uh, decreased with every difficult lecture passed, but increased a bit with each practice. 
uh, which is not very expiring to continue this teaching process, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, you have to complete what you started. So uh, it just wasn't too, too glad to see the decreasing of uh, the uh, attendance uh, attendees. Uh, okay, moving to the positive section, the benefits I get. First one, the gratitude. And despite the fact the attendance was decreasing, the regular listeners of this course obtained lots of new and useful knowledges. Uh, and from my part, knowing that the Android is not the only framework in the IT industry, they can pick another one. I tried to share the experience that could be useful in their future career, like communication with colleagues, managers, designers, uh, members of other teams, and so on. Uh, task estimations, pull request reviews, professional growth, and so on. Uh, the appreciation. So I received the certificate of appreciation from Astrog Academy, as well as the merge from the Softstroke Academy. You can see it's, it's the hoodie, and here, uh, let me move the videos. Uh, it's a thermal cup as well. A small one, but pretty useful in some cases. Uh, and I guess the, the final one, the, uh, the pride. The feeling that uh, you've independently managed a vast amount of work that was completely new for yourself, that you've uh, grown a bit in your own eyes and uh, maybe the most important one that perhaps you've been able to show one of the students uh, the past that you have took almost 10 years ago, uh, the past that uh, changed your life for the very best. Yeah, thanks for your attention. A pretty brief one. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jorge. Do we have questions? Yeah, I have a small one. Uh, how this uh, Astro Academy is related to SoftServe? Uh, I'm not sure about their uh, relationships, but uh, as far as I understood, uh, uh, it is uh, it, it's not the first case uh, of this practice, and they ask to uh, perform some courses uh, from time to time. But uh, the Android was the first one, I believe. The uh, last year was some kind of cross-platform course uh, that was presented to the students. So uh, maybe other academies in Ukraine also have some uh, relation links with the Server Academy. So uh, they will give a chance to developers to present and create the course. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Are there any other questions? No. Yeah, one more from my side. Uh, did you have any questions from students that was hard to answer? Uh, that's a good one. So oftentimes uh, they try to find some similarities or something familiar, uh, try to create some uh, comparisons to the C sharp language that they were familiar to uh, but the point is uh, I wasn't so <laughs> when they tried to ask me uh, but what it, how it would look like in the C sharp or uh, how it would work uh, in the uh, in, in, in unity uh, framework how can you build and implement it in unity projects because some of the students that were involved in the uh, Unity game development uh, projects already. And uh, I couldn't actually answer them. And also there were some questions regarding the pull request reviews. Uh, it was really hard to 
uh, tell them how it is implemented because uh, most of them didn't create one in their life. So we had to cover all the steps from the uh, of the commercial development cycle. Uh, so just to answer the question, how to actually you should perform the code reviews of the pull requests and uh, what's the requirements, why that so, uh, how can it move to the blocked, rejected and uh, states and so on. Thank you, Hori, for your <clears throat> openness. Uh, does anybody want to ask any other questions? Yeah, I have a small one. So, Hori, looking back at this experience, would you like to repeat it in future? Uh, I would say no. I think uh, the one time is uh, is good enough. Uh, just because, as I said, uh, it requires so much time uh, of your own. And uh, yeah, it, it might sound a bit selfish, but if it would be uh, well paid, uh, as it well deserve is your average rate, it's not even uh, like your overdues or something like that, but just with the regular rates, uh, it would be much inspiring much more inspiring i would say but in the current state uh it's a good experience for one time but uh, uh, i also received some questions w would i uh, like to create the some kind of video course something like that uh, based on this project but uh, it, it would be the same answer as no because it would involve so much uh time efforts of uh, video editing. And uh, I believe there's so many courses in Udemy and other platforms like that uh, already created, already rated, uh, already modified based on the uh, comments and uh, advice suggestions and so on. It's a good thought, thank you. Sure. We we'll still have some time for other questions. So if you have any, please. Yeah, George, uh, how, how many students did you have on average on your lectures? Uh, the, the whole amount of the students uh, was 14, I believe. But uh, the first lecture was uh, to our students and uh, till the last one, uh, it, it was about six, I believe. So the, the number was decreasing, as I said, with the uh, difficult lectures. Uh, but I saw the interests of uh, the students when it comes to practice, uh, when I'm trying to explain, when I'm trying to ask them to do something uh, during these practices and uh, uh, they, they would try to argue with each other and proposing uh, better solutions. It, it, it was uh, nice to watch even <laughs> and to be a part of it. And was it an online or, or offline event yeah it was online event uh, on every monday uh, nine yeah nine a.m thank you george sure thanks for your questions any other questions Uh, if no, I think that uh, we can all, Jorge, thank you for your performance, for sharing your experience. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we hope that it was uh, really interesting and useful for you. Uh, hope to see you on, other, on our other community events. 
Uh, wishing everyone a great day ahead. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.